Hello, my name is Dustin Weeks and I'm the Assistant Chair of Library Services here at Daytona State College. I've been here over 29 years. Um, I'm actually an alumni of the college. It's, I've really enjoyed my time here. I was really lucky and fortunate to come back here. Um, uh, a friend of mine who had gotten a job here at Daytona State let me know there was an opening and I came and interviewed for it and I've been here ever since. And while I've been here, I've pretty much done every job here. I've uh, been head librarian, I've been head of reference, head of technical services. Um, so it's been a wonderful experience because in a library this size, uh, which is a medium-sized academic library, you get to do so many different things and have so many different experiences and it's just it's just been great and even though um, I'll probably be retiring in a few years, um, I'm really going to miss it when I do. My name is Mercedes Clement. I am the Chair of Library Services. I have been in the, working in the library for about 37 years and 10 months. And um, I notice a lot of changes in the library, but the message is always the same. It's question, discover, and learn. But the mode that we deliver the message change, because now we used to uh, just talk to students face to face, but now we can do it electronically, we can uh, um, chat with them, we can email them, and uh, we can do a lot of things. So the, our message is always to deliver the a, um, information to students. Welcome to the Research Assistance Desk. This used to be the reference desk in the old days, and it's kind of changed over the years. Do you remember? Yes, yes. We used to have a directional desk and where people ask questions, and then we have the references. But we noticed that uh, a lot of students did not connect reference desks with what the purpose was. So that's why we changed it to research assistant desk. Yes, they did not know what <laughs> reference was, which right. made sense. So we wanted to make it a little more user-friendly, a little more obvious what the function was. Right. And I remember when the desk was up there, which was even more inaccessible. Right, um, right. At least now where it is, we, students can see it when they come into the main part of the building. And over the years, I've noticed that um, the reference collection hasn't been used a lot. Right. It used to be really something that was critical. And in many ways, it was a good place to start for students because they could go to a specialized encyclopedia, get a definition, get a good solid starting point. Sometimes, even though we have so much information available, it's hard for them to get anchored and to get started. And, and the reference collection really helped with that. Right, right. And we have several ways of helping students. Not only they come face to face, but also we chat. We, you know, so student that said, well, we have laryngitis. That's why we can call to that. <laughs> we solve that problem. You can chat. You can email. <laughs> so there's no excuse. We're here to help our students. We find all kind of ways to help them. Welcome to our print periodical section. This is where we have basically the physical magazines. Now, when I started, we had 400 titles, um, and now we have about 150 titles. And that's one of the big things that's changed. We have less physical material, but more virtual material. I also, in this room right behind us here, this is all bound periodicals, bound back issues in book form. And we had book indexes that you had to use to look up your articles. And remember, there was microfilm right. in the room right behind us. We had microfilm for hundreds of rolls of microfilm. We had the New York Times going back to 1850 on microfilm, and you'd have to put on the big machine and roll through it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then our list of magazine, we used to compare it with the list of embroidery because sometimes we have some title they don't have, so we can share that with our student. Now everything is electronic, so everybody can see what we have, so we don't have to keep all the bugs. Yes, you don't have to drive down the road yeah. like you used to yeah. um, to, to, get your, to get your article. Yes. Yeah. Another big change is right behind us here in the room is the FIC, the Faculty Innovation Center. And we share our space now with several other entities. We have the College Writing Center downstairs, we have the Academic Support Center, we have a coffee shop, um, which we didn't have. This space all used to be library space, and it was actually needed because, again, our physical materials took up so much room. But over the years, we've been able to you know, take better advantage of the space and, and invite in other support services 
as the physical collections have been moving to virtual collections. Right behind us here, we have one of our open computer labs on campus. Yes, and then it used to be for faculty also, so students will come and learn and, and use a computer because a lot of them don't have computer at home, so we make it open for them to use. This was actually a study area behind mm -hmm. us originally. It wasn't enclosed, it just had study tables. In fact, downstairs in the Academic Support Center, that was all study tables mm -hmm. and some additional shelving. Mm -hmm. um, and right next to us, that's where we had our uh, current magazine collection was on the, mm -hmm. on the mezzanine there. Mm -hmm. This was actually the first uh, open computer lab on the campus mm -hmm. uh, when they first installed it. I remember the uh, the guys that started it was um, they would come here on the weekends and uh, hook everything up and play Doom uh, <laughs> together on it. They'd network the computers together. You had to do it manually back then. Right. Um, and as Mercedes mentioned, downstairs there was an open lab for faculty, mm -hmm. and faculty didn't have computers in their offices. In fact, we mm -hmm. had a typing pool where mm -hmm. faculty would send things to be typed, mm -hmm. and this was the first computer lab for faculty. And it was, it was a neat environment because they'd come and they'd get together and they could, you know, learn together how to use computers because these were new devices for most faculty. Yeah. Um, and that's now it's bookshelves. Yeah. And at one time, that was these were two of the first computer labs that were open both to faculty and to students on the campus. Yeah, and over here we have the study room, you know, for quiet study area, and a lot of students use them properly. Some of them <laughs> use them as their home, <laughs> but we try to keep it, you know, scheduled, you know, for that purpose. This is our online catalog, and basically this is our virtual library. And even if students are here in the building now, they go to here to find books. I remember when we had a the current cut catalog. catalog. A cut catalog used to be right in the middle, right here. That's where students would go and look for a book if they know the author, the title, or subject. So now everything is combined to electronically that they can see even at home. If they are at home, they can see a cut catalog. In fact, Mercedes was head of technical services when we basically moved from the card catalog into cyberspace. Yes. Um, she was the one that helped uh, create our OCLC presence, which is always our online computer presence. Um, in fact, we still have the magnetic tapes that we use to convert our material. So yeah. it was, it's, it's been a long journey um, to what we have now. But the big difference is students have so much information available to them now. It used to be our job was helping them dig out those little bits of information that were available locally. Mm -hmm. Now it's how do they wrap their arms around this world of information, mm -hmm. things that we supply and things that are available on the web. But we still love books yeah. and we still highlight books as you can see from our new book display case. Um, books are still important, students still love books, uh, but they're just one way of getting information now and we want students to be uh, well versed in how to get any type of information no matter where it resides. Ha, <laughs> ha,